right, everybody. Good morning. Running a little bit late trying to get all the electronics to work, but apparently they seem to be working now. So here we go. It is day six, otherwise known as week two of new agent class. So let's see if we got it. New agent class 23.009. How are we doing this morning? Good. Great. Good. 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 Awesome. Good. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of sync. So one weekend and we're out of sync. So we want to kind of all do it at the same time. That helps me. Okay, here we go. New Agent Class 23.009. How are we doing this morning? Great. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Goodness gracious. It was a weekend, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. I see there's some uh, stock investing advice at least we know amc is moving the board intel is taking a shellacking michael fields how are you doing this morning doing wonderful how are you doing sir i am doing okay i can't complain whatsoever did you get a chance to work on friday or over the weekend with your upline all weekend long baby all week <laughs> <laughs> all right tell us about it what happened so I sat in on, I think it was five or six presentations. I set up three presentations myself, one on Friday, one on Sunday, and another one for today. Um, I sat in on one sale, um, or two sales actually. Uh, one of them was for 1200 ALP. Um, there were a couple of parents, uh, real friendly people. Um, that deal went pretty easily. Then later that day, um, the we made a deal on just the cancer plan because it was um, the son of the parents that were sold earlier that day. But he mm -hmm. had a whole, a whole like list of terrible health issues that made him, for the most part, uninsurable by other people. <clears throat> so what so, did we end up selling him? Uh, just the cancer plan, which okay. was just what like a hundred, two hundred dollars or something like that. Did you uh, present to these clients at all, or did you just observe? Um, the sales I observed, I presented to one yesterday and, um, they said that they would think about it because they had to like run over some numbers, make sure it was feasible for them. And then they are, um, I'm going to present to them again today because we gave them a day to think about it basically. And see All right, so when you say you presented to. to them, that means you got the uh, referrals? Um, Michael, you're, you're killing me here. You, you, you're taking a story and you're just making it very long. Help me out. <laughs> Sorry, I, I talk a lot. Um, Focus, I know. Okay, that's fine. Did you get okay. any referrals during your presentation? Yes. Okay, are they in your lead pack? Uh, they are in my... Um, my trainer's lead pack. Why would they be in your trainer's lead pack? Why wouldn't they uh, be in yours? So um, we presented under his, or I put. Right. I mean, I why would you do that? We had a conversation last week about how important those referrals are, that if you're going to do a presentation, you should be doing it under yours. Just put in other and then put in all their information. That's all you have to do, right? Yeah, I was just having technical difficulties on my end during the Oh, okay. So you were so, having a technical issue. Have you resolved that issue? Yeah, I did after the presentation was over. Okay. That so have you talked about with your upline that you want all those referrals that you generated? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what are they supposed to give them to you? Um, after the follow-up today. All right, man. It's your money. I, I don't understand I know, why I know, people let their money just sit in someone else's box. All right. So you watched the sale. You you did a presentation. You're following up today. That's great. Yeah. How much did you present to them? What plan? Uh, I presented 
100%. The no cost legal will kit. <clears throat> okay, but I'm asking what insurance plan did you present? You won't have it because it's in your uplines stuff. So you just have to remember it. What you don't remember one presentation you made yesterday or the other day? It was. Oh, we were selling them on um, basic life insurance. It was a referral from uh, uh, credit. Yeah, you're, you're doing everything but answering my question. <laughs> Did, did you present a plan yes, to this client? Yes, yes. What plan did you present? How much was it worth? It was worth 1300 I believe. Okay, awesome. So now we know you did a 1300 plan. You're following up today. So tomorrow you can tell us whether or not they're going to buy, right? Yes. Excellent. Anybody else? Let's start with Tiffany Velasquez. Tiffany, did you work on Friday or this weekend with your upline? Morning, I did on Friday. Excellent. And what happened? Um, I made several calls myself. Um, I was able to schedule one appointment for Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. And I ha I was not on it. And I texted my upline just to follow up and see how it went. And then I was able to watch a couple presentations. Um, oh, none of them hold on ended a up. I'm, I'm a little oh, slow yep, this morning because it is Monday. Okay. Sorry. So you got, you got to work with me. You schedule an appointment with a client on Sunday, and then you were on the appointment? Correct. Why? It was during my church time, so that's a non-negotiable oh, so for me. Why you schedule it when you're available as well as your upline? I scheduled it when my upline was available. Are you available at all on Sundays? Yes. Okay. So your availability did not meet the availability of the upline? Is that why you didn't schedule it then? Yes. Okay. So what happened? Um, I don't know how it went out. I texted her just to follow up and see how it went. Who's your upline? Aubrey Cole. Uh, are you in Canada? Or she's, are you in under, she's under Ashley Rust. Oh, what's her name again? Aubrey. Aubrey's an SA? Yeah, I know Aubrey. So you, she, you guys are killing me. I don't understand. I don't, I don't, is it me? Is it me? If it's me, I apologize. But if it's my career, my money on the line, and I'm setting up appointments with clients, I want to know what happened, much less I want to sit in them. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, what, what are we actually doing for our upline or our people that we're, we're working for them for free? Yeah. I mean, hey, if you're going to want to work for free, I'm totally down. I, can I give you guys all my leads and you start calling on them? And whenever I'm available, we'll set it up. Is that okay? Tiffany, you know, I'm just poking a little bit of fun at you, but I want you to yes, understand your, your time has value, right? Right. I mean, I, I just want to make sure that everybody, uh, everybody has the best opportunity to win. That's really what it comes down to. So, Aubrey, her last name is Cole, right? Yes, that's correct. All right, here she is. Let's call her and see if, in fact, this was on Sunday? Yes. All right, excellent. See if she answers the phone. <laughs> I mean, it's only 917 on the West Coast, right? Hello? Aubrey Cole, how are you? Good morning. Hi, Sam. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I understand from Tiffany that you had an appointment that she set for you on Sunday, and the class was just interested to know what the outcome was oh the person did not show the person but, did but not show it was probably not, it was not her fault because she that person has also not shown me two other times oh okay gotcha so they just yeah. say they're going to show up and then they never do that's frustrating yeah all so right we'll, we'll teach and learn how to solidify uh, appointments as well okay no worries just wanted to follow up thank you Aubrey thanks Sam all right take care bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. So there you go. You set an appointment and they didn't show up. How now we know how important it is to solidify. But in all fairness, Aubrey had her, the same person not show up twice either. Right. So don't take it to heart on this particular occasion. How did you solidify the appointment with the client? Um, I let her know, like I confirmed two or three times on the call with her. 
And I let her know that we were going to text her and email her um, before her appointment on Sunday. Do you think that happened? I know Aubrey uses cal Calendly. Calendly? So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I would imagine so, because all you do is plug it in and it does it for you. When the number, I'm sorry, when you call, last question, okay, and I'll, I'll give you, <laughs> I want to give you a few minutes of our time. The number you called and set the appointment on, was it from yes. your phone number? Yes. So do you think if you had texted from that phone to reconfirm on that Sunday, hey, you have an appointment at, you know, 10 o'clock, whatever time it was. Do you think the likelihood was they may have responded to you? Possibly. It would make sense if it's a recognizable number. Yeah. That's why I want all of you to join your own appointments that you set, because now you're motivated to make a phone call to say, hey, you need to show up. And it's coming from a number that they'll recognize as, hey, I talked to this person and I set an appointment. Okay. Stephanie Wheel, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Did we work on Friday or over the weekend? I worked on Friday. And um, weekends. okay, how did how did Friday go? Um, I basically just practiced my presentation. So you didn't observe any presentations nor make any phone calls? No. Okay. Have you made any in the class so far? Have I made any calls in the class? Yeah. In the first week, have you made any outbound calls to clients or have you observed any presentations? No. Some of my upline is in Cancun, so I'm not sure if that's possibly holding Who's things your up. Uh, James Hodges. Okay. He's he's in Cancun, so I've been with John, but he's kind of in and out of the call sessions. So, okay. Well, hopefully we can get some done this week, right? Do you remember what the goals are by the end of the class? How many outbound calls you need to make? Uh, three hundred. And how many sales do you need to observe? Uh, I that ten. Ten. There you go. Right. So I mean, it's a it's a goal that we want you to get to simply because we want you to see the different aspects of the sales process live with whomever. It doesn't have to be your upline. It could be anybody because virtually everybody follows the same kind of uh, <clears throat> cookbook, I guess, as opposed to anything else. Well, what's going on with my lighting here? Uh-oh. It's like my lamp died. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Leighton Wilson. Leighton, how about you? Did you do anything over the weekend? Uh, just a little bit, Sam. Uh, essentially, we uh, had the afternoon off on Friday, and then Saturday, uh, our supervisor had an emergency power outage in his area, so he let us go early. Um, I wasn't able to observe any uh, calls. Um, because of that, but I have discussed with Yadwiga about, um, I have dual citizenship uh, for uh, the States and Canada. So I'm discussing that with her and Jesse um, today about how we can utilize that. I don't understand what you mean, how to utilize it. If you uh, just, uh, just that I'll be you, able to, yeah, about that I'll be able to sell in the uh, states, essentially. That's all uh, we went over this weekend. Where do you live? You live in Canada, right? Right. Okay. So you can get your uh, licenses in any state in the US if you're a US citizen, you just got to meet whatever the requirements are. However, your upline has to be licensed in those states as well. And Canadian leadership only have certain states that they're allowed to be licensed in. So okay. just take that into consideration. Sure. Uh, so it was Jesse, did he lose power? Uh, no, it was Mo. Uh, Yad is technically our, or my. Your RGA, uh, right? Uh, so yes. you're saying that the AO North, which is the, uh, the login that you can use to get to all of Canada's uh zoom you weren't able to get into that at all you couldn't observe anything no we were we were told you guys have the uh rest oh of the, okay so yeah. they just told you yeah yeah come off. 
Okay. Yeah. So I just watched a bunch of master classes and uh, other presentations. Was that useful for you? It was. Okay. How well do you think you did on your video? I think I did okay. I don't know what that means. I, I think uh, it was a little bit choppy. It was the first time I'd done a full run. Um, but I, I think I handled the script all right, but there was definitely some flip-flopping back and forth um, between reading the script and- So on a scale filming. of one to 10, you would give yourself a what? Six, five, maybe. Okay. Mia Irwin, good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? I am well. Did you get a chance to do any work this weekend or at least any AIL work? <laughs> yes, um, I did Friday evening with um, Tyler. Let me see, hold on. Um, Kyle, I'm sorry, Kyle Carpenter. Um, yep, he, Kyle he Carpenter. Did a, yeah, he did a close on Friday. Um, we're 22 and plus the referrals. Um, and then I also sat with Dante, I think it was Friday night or maybe Saturday night um, for 1,800 plus seven referrals. Nice. Um, and then I did one yesterday. I think it was Dante's, but um, I'll have to go back and look. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you sat through some of that stuff. That's that's good. Uh, did anybody watch Art Francis on Friday or Saturday? Yes. I did too. Sorry. Okay. And uh, what happened with art? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember on that one. I'm sorry. So art uh, went through a presentation and they agreed to buy. And when he got to EAP, he asked yeah. them to grab their banking information. And do you remember what the client did? Yep. What happened, Bobby? What did the client do? Uh, they got spooked, it seemed like. <laughs> he asked them uh, to get their ID, but then he, then he said something about your um, your banking information, and then they just completely were like, yeah, we... And, and they had already said they had needed to think about it, but he rehashed them, and he got them back. Mm -hmm. He got into the EAP, and who, who, who was it? Someone made a really good point. Um, Ray. My man Ray made a real good point um, when when he came back into the room. He said, "Anybody has you know anything you can add about it?" <coughs> Ray, Ray made a great point about you know how he could have maybe reworded it, but uh, yeah, they got spooked when he started talking about you know banking information. Yeah, on Wednesday when we go through EAP, you're going to see that the banking information is on the first page. However, the way I teach it is I do not get the banking information until the very last thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And the reason for that, it's a give and a take, right? So you don't want to take something from them until you've given them a lot. So yes, in the HP Pro, when we go through the process of uh, the presentation, we give them a lot and then we get them to commit and then we get into EAP. EAP only takes 10 minutes, folks. It's going to take us the entire day to get through all the various pieces but literally when you're doing this in front of client for those of you that have watched multiple presentations how long does EF typically take 10 12 minutes at the most unless they have a lot of medical issues yeah like right? 10 or 15 minutes yeah may maybe 15 if they're not as efficient but typically it's 10 to 12 minutes easy and in my mind it makes sense to invest that 10 or 12 minutes to continue to build the rapport with the client show them everything on the screen that they need to answer, go through everything. And the very last thing you then ask for is the banking information. Because if you ask for it in the beginning, particularly with uh, older folks, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa why, do you, why do you need that? Younger folks are used to just giving away all their information, right? With the apps and whatnot. But older folks are like, well, no, no, hold on. Why do you need that? Why do you need that right now? And immediately they start doing what? They start thinking your credibility goes down. I don't need to do this right now. I can wait. Let me think about it. They feel pressured. So if you, in fact, follow the plan I'm going to show you, then what happened to art typically doesn't happen to you. Will it happen? Sure. There's going to be times where clients will tell you, no, no, I don't want to give you my banking information or whatever. But more often than not, if we've done a good job of showing them everything that had to be filled out, asking about all their personal medical history, 
getting all their doctor's information, writing down all their prescriptions, everything under the sun. And then at the very end, hey, we're just about ready to wrap up, almost done. Who do you bank with? Oh, I bank with Bank of America. Oh, okay, awesome. You're out of San Jose? Yes. Okay, well, let me just verify your routing number. I have, you know, 00035812 Oh, yeah, that's the right one. Awesome. Now the last thing I need to get for you is just your account. That's it. It's much easier hurdle when everything is almost done for the client to think, okay, I'll just give you one more thing and then I'm out of here. As opposed to give me the biggest thing possible right at the beginning, you've put yourself in a position of creating your own objection. Does that make sense to everybody? So again, we're going to go over that as well. But I talked to Art about this particular presentation and he just, he knew he blew it the moment he said, hey, can I have your banking information with that couple? particularly that couple, because like Bobby said, he had to reel them back in, right? Okay, uh, let's see. So we did all that. Has everybody submitted the DRB report? I have 19 and there's 25 of you in the class. Alexis, Brent, are you there? Nick Carter, Ferris, Patty, Jade, and Felicia, are you all there? Yes. Yes. Okay, Nick. Yes, Ferris, I'm here. I sent you an email. Did yep, you submit? filling that out right now. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that, everybody. Boom, 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 boom. Jade sent me an email. Okay, Jade, thank you. Uh, hopefully you submitted your DRB report, Jade. Let's see, Gregory Joyner, Sierra Polly, Rhonda, Justin Larson, good morning, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Really good, thanks. Good. We got Jay Woodley, Jennifer Amori. There you are, Jennifer. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Happy Monday. Uh, yes, happy Monday. Absolutely. <laughs> so I watched a few videos this weekend, just like I said I would. Which one of you would like to have your video viewed by the class and then we uh, analyze it? I leave it up to anybody who submitted me, who actually submitted a video. Gregory Joyner, you want to be the one that the class takes a look at? Yeah, sure. No one else is raising their hand. May as well. <laughs> All right. Let me find your video. It, it does uh, cut short, though, at the end because I my Zoom ran out of time. So it, it I wasn't able to completely finish at the end. I don't, uh, didn't we go through that? Uh, not that I know of. Well, what I, I had said is you need to work with somebody who has more than a 45 minute Zoom capacity. So that way you don't have that problem. Gotcha. I, I didn't remember hearing that. All right, so what I, what I need that it will use as a fallback. Jay, did you submit your video and are you prepared to have the class look at it? I was going to ask a question about Zoom, similar to what you're just going over with the 45 minutes. Okay, hold on. So let's hold on the thought for just a moment. I need somebody who submitted their video to have us take a look at it as a class and provide feedback. I got my feedback in general, but I want one of you to, to admit that they're willing to have it reviewed. Tiffany Velasquez, is that going to be you? Sure, mine's full length. You can use mine. Okay, so we are going to, well, hold on a second. Did you submit two emails to me? I don't think so. I have the one email for your four attachments. But not the link to the video? Well, that's weird, though. I have you listed as submitting it, so maybe it's just me. Hold on a second. Okay. Rex.Velasquez22, is that the right one? No? Um, What's your email address? TiffanyVelasquez.AO at Gmail. Oh. Okay, there we go. And yeah, I have the four files from you. I don't have the link, even though I put you down. As, so. Can you okay, send Okay, let me figure this out. Yeah. Okay. And then let me go back to Jay. Jay, what was your question? Yeah, so I must have missed that as well, the whole um, 40 minute cutoff thing, um, because Dewey and I both went ahead and just upgraded to uh zoom premium or whatever it's called pro yeah pro is that something that everyone's going to need to do 
Yeah. Uh, exactly. Well, when I say that, um, Pro allows you to go beyond 40 minutes. If you just have a free version, then it cuts you off at 40 minutes. If you are the one hosting, if you're part of like some of you have free ones and you're with me, uh, you can stay as long as you want because you can't record what I'm doing. Right. The whole point there is if you can record, then they don't want more than 40 minutes recorded on the free version. That way they can manage how much disk space they need or how much storage space. Right. Gotcha. gotcha. Yep. So everyone should upgrade to the pro version. So that way you can uh, record longer than 40 minutes. Tiffany, are you there? Yep. I found the link that I thought I had sent. I'm sending it right now in an email. Yep. Email it to me and let's figure out why you're weirdly on the list of submittals, but not on the list of uh, the other thing. Okay, dokie. Okay, is it, have you sent it yet? Tiffany, are you there? Yep, sending it right this second. Oh, <laughs> okay. Everyone else, please fill out the DRB report so we can get that um, submitted for the attendance. And I have 24 of you and there are 25 in the room. So we're just missing one person. All right, let's go back to my email address. So here's what I'd like you to do. <clears throat> I'd like everybody to take out the, what we call the presentation rubric. It's a PDF file, okay? And the PDF file is number 20. And all we're gonna look at is part A. Okay, and then the email that I sent this morning, we're going to look at that too, and we're just going to jot down notes based on what we see from Tiffany's video, and then we'll discuss it, and we'll kind of see what the feedback looks like, and then I'll talk about everyone's videos in general. <laughs> Tiffany, I don't see it. Can you put it in the, in the chat for me? Because it's not, there's no email for me. Yeah, it shows it's sending, but I just put it in the chat too. Okay, so this is a pretty sizable, that's what it is. Oh, you did it with Aubrey Cole. Very nice. All right, everybody. Hold on. Uh, hold on one second for me. My daughter's calling, so I got to see what that's about. Just bear with me. I'm sitting here talking to you and I have my mute on. That's awesome. Way to go, Sam. Okay. So uh, what I need again is your PDF file, attachment 20, looking at part A, just looking to score that, as well as the email that I sent you, looking at the various areas that we're going to talk about. Uh, Nick, Jennifer, Ferris, Patty, and Stephanie Wheel, are you all there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yes. All right. Thank yes. you. All right. Here we go. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Hi, Aubrey. How are you doing today? Oh, hi, Tiffany. A little tired. Yeah, How are we're you? getting towards the end of the day here. Yeah, it's getting late, but I'm here. Me too, and I'm glad that you jumped on the call with me and I get to put a face to the name. 
So I just wanted to remind you, I'm Tiffany and I'm with American Income. Um, we are the company that handles all of the veteran benefits across the country. And um, my papa and my grandpa, they actually both were in the military. They're no longer with us. And so I just, this job is near and dear to my heart to be able to help veterans get the benefits that they deserve. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. And is this the first time that someone has met with you um, virtually in regards to your benefits? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm glad I get to be the one to do it. And are you part of any of the veteran service organizations like the VFO or American Legion? No. Okay, not a problem. Um, I know they do offer a lot of services for the community. That's wonderful that they're there. And I just want to tell you before we get started, I don't think that the veterans hear it enough. And I just really want to thank you for your service to this country. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Just let me know, please, when you can see my screen. Okay, I can see it. Perfect. So this is a copy of the letter that you received. The veteran service organizations got together and noticed that there was some common concern shared by all of the veterans. Um, so it made my job really simple. Number one is we'll go over the updated contact information the VSO wants you to have. Number two is they wanted to ensure that your will and estate information is up to date. And then they also want to go over uh, the VA burial benefits, including the life insurance that they've set up with American Income. And then at the end, there's a little report form. It goes directly to the VSOs. And it's so they know that I did my job and we got you enrolled today. Does all of that sound good so far? Yeah. Perfect. So do you know why the VSOs want to make sure that you are enrolled today? Uh, no. Not a problem. So they want to make sure that everything is taken care of before something really serious happens, right? And they yeah. also want to ensure that all of the veterans get a chance to be seen. Now, the good news is while we're on this call, there's nothing for you to do. You don't have to like write anything down or try to memorize anything. I'm going to email you the really important stuff that you need. So if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me and ask your questions, okay? Okay. Perfect. So this first part here is our last will and testament. It's just a short little survey that we're going to do together. Can you see the survey? Yes. Okay, perfect. And Aubrey, are you married? I'm single. You are single? Okay. Do you have any children? I do. I have uh, one child and it's uh, he, he's three. He's three? So cute. Yeah. I bet he keeps you busy. He does. Very busy. And uh, what branch of the service are you with? Uh, Marines. The Marines. That was my papa as well. He was a Marine. Oh, that's great. And when you uh, left the Marines, you were honorably discharged? Correct. Perfect. And not a member of the VSO. Perfect. And did you serve in the war, any of the wars, Aubrey? No, just here in the States. Okay. Where did they have you at? I was in Texas. Oh, nice. I bet it was hot over there, though. It, yes, it was very hot, actually. And what was your rank at your discharge? Uh, he could put any of them. <laughs> okay, we'll say that you were a yeah, just any. lieutenant. And did you have the life insurance through the VA? I do not. Okay, not a problem. We'll go over all of that before we wrap up today. And let me get your info in here. I just want to make sure I'm spelling everything correctly. It's A-U-B-R-I-E, correct? Yes. And K-O-L-L? -L? Yep. Perfect. And what is your birthday? Oh, sorry, Aubrey, you're muted. Unfortunately, I can't hear you. Sorry, it's 8-12-1998. Okay, great. And let's go ahead and put kiddo in here. What is his name? It's Liam, L-I-A-M. 
I A M. And he have a, does he have the same last name as you? He actually has a different last name. So it's Wallace. W A L L A C E. C E. Perfect. And I know you said it's three. When's his birthday? It is five. So May 16th, 2020. Perfect. And Aubrey, are you retired or are you currently working? I'm working. Okay. Are you part-time or full-time? Uh, full-time. Nice. And what do you do for work? Um, I work from home as a coach, just a health coach. You might have to give me some tips before we get off the phone. <laughs> and what's your annual income that you bring in? Uh, annual income is about 50 grand. Okay. And um, you're self-employed, right? Yes. Okay. So no insurance through work, but do you have any life insurance, either a whole life or a term policy? Um, no, I have no insurance. No. Okay. We will get that covered before we get off the phone as well. And Aubrey, do you rent your home or do you own your home? I rent. Okay. And do you bank uh, locally with a checking account or a savings account? Uh, I have both. Great. And have you thought about what you want to do um, when you do inevitably pass away? Are you thinking you would like a earth burial or a cremation? Um, cremation. Cremation. Okay. And you have you thought about if you would like your ashes at a national cemetery or a state cemetery or just not in a cemetery at all? Uh, national, I'm thinking. National, nice. Let's see where. Oh, banking where it says check. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I appreciate your patience here. So now this is your accidental death and dismemberment certificate. Um, it's non-contributory and not participating, which just means essentially that it's already been taken care of for you. Okay. I, outside of recording, I have a question. Will all of this be yep. populated in and everything? Yes. Yep. That'll all be there. And then um, they don't have to, you don't even have to do anything with that. Just like the script says. So it's already. Oh my goodness. Already asking questions in the middle of recording your uh, thing. Where are you at? Where is she? I don't see her. She had the camera off. She didn't want us to see her. Okay. So, so far, how uh, on a scale of one to ten, Jennifer? No, actually, let's go to Tiffany. On a scale of one to ten, Tiffany, how are you doing so far? I pick myself apart, so I'm going to give myself like a four. Okay, that's ridiculous. It's not a four. Okay, it, come on, you're nowhere near a four. I've seen fours, <laughs> and you are not a four. <laughs> okay, not a four. <clears throat> However, you. are you on a phone call or are you in a Zoom call? Zoom call. Oh, okay. I was getting a little confused. Uh, yep. All right, a Zoom call. Bobby, <clears throat> what what feedback do you have so far? What you've seen? <clears throat> and what I want you to do is not look at the, uh, pardon me, don't pay attention so much to the rubric and the score, but look at my email where I'm talking about the uh, things that I look for in terms of folks, you know, the feedback on their videos. Your email? What email are you referring to? Oh my goodness. Did I not send this out to everybody? I hope I did. Didn't I send an email this morning 41 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah we got one. one. What's that? I said yes, I got one. Oh, the feedback email. Okay, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. So let me throw it up on the screen here, right? Okay. And so what I want you to do is tell me from any one of these, Cadence Tonality Rapport, the camera, HP Pro, check and tie down so far. What is your feedback so far based on those items? Um, I I think I think her cadence is fine. Um, she did good on rapport, I think. Um, 
I mean, I, I, I would give her a seven so far. Okay, seven. Justin Larson, how about you? I would give her an eight. She's doing really good so far, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Look at this eight. So, Tiffany, your whole idea of a four seems not to be accurate. I think you're a little too harsh on yourself. Yeah. Uh, Gregory Joyner, what about you? What would you give her? Uh, probably a six or a seven. Uh, the rapport part was kind of iffy at the start. The rapport part was a little iffy. Okay. It, it just gotcha. kind of robotic at the start. But uh, as she went on, it did get better. Uh, hey, Patty, you know what's interesting, Patty? I don't have your email address at all. Can you put your email address into the uh, chat directly to me so I can forward this to you? I, I sure can. Yep. You have not been getting any emails from me because you're not in my class list. Ah, probably because you weren't at the beginning. Okay. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Uh, John Cameron, what about you? I think it's about an eight. Um, I think uh, the transition from turning off the camera could be a little bit better, but that's about it. Right, because she, she showed us her screen first, and then she paused for a second, and then it was obvious she was turning her camera off to you and I because we know what to look for. But, Tiffany, what I would tell you is turn your camera off first. Turn it off first and then present it because then it will look to the client like that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. Not the end of the world, obviously. Let me ask you this. What do you think your energy level was, Tiffany? I mean, I know myself, so I know that I personally sound nervous, like I can hear it in my own voice. Okay, so I get that. You may have some uh, what we call fear spikes, right? I totally get that. But from an energy perspective, were you bringing energy into the presentation? It probably could be better. Right. So here's one of the things all of you should be aware of. If I remember correctly, last week I said that when you make a phone call, it's the first time somebody's heard you. And if you're a presentation, it's the first time they're meeting you. Everything is contingent upon your initial interaction when you build your credibility. Right. If you bring in a certain level of energy, <clears throat> that's the energy that the thing will typically stay at. So for all of you, you want to bring in a little more high energy. You don't have to be like, for example, for me, I'm not bubbly and I'm not, you know, whatever. I don't have that type of persona. Right. But I think I bring energy. I do it different ways. But that's what I need all of you to do is have energy because that's the first time those people are seeing you. They'll match your energy typically. But if you're matching their energy and they're low key, like Aubrey's kind of low key. Right, Tiffany? If you match that energy, you're bringing everything down. Not that it's the end of the world, but it just makes it a little more difficult to try to bring it back up again when you start talking about certain things. And if you think about it, if you if energy <clears throat> range was like this and you weren't here, but you were here, when you start talking about death, how much more room do you have to go before it becomes depressing? So if you start higher and then you talk about death, the difference between the two is significant. You talk about their funeral fund expenses and then you bring it back up hey, well, we're going to take care of that. We're going to make sure that your beneficiaries, your family, everyone's taken care of. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Layton, what would you give her on one of those feedback areas? One of those areas, just pulling this up, sorry. Rachel. Sorry, my sister's working, but... Uh, yeah, her tonality, I thought, was uh, upbeat. I thought she did bring some good energy, maybe a little less at first, but it I think it uh, got better as she went on, yeah. Okay. Um, so the tonality got a little bit better. What about the um, what about her navigation with HB Pro, Sky? For what we saw so far, what do you think her uh, ability to use HP Pro is. Is it good so far? Is it okay? Because we're going to see how it goes through the rest. But right now, right off the bat, what's the first impression? I think she's doing good. I think that she's flowing pretty, um, pretty well. And she's keeping the conversation going as she's filling in. So it's not just like waiting on her to fill it in. Okay, let's take a look at a little bit more. In there for them. That is actually for the response card too. So when you open up HP Pro when you're in a real live. Oh yeah, one other thing. <clears throat> you're in the middle of a 
<clears throat> excuse me, a role play, <laughs> right? We, we don't want to ask the person we're role playing with a question about what it is that we're supposed to be doing because we've been practicing this now for a number of times, right, Tiff Tiffany, you there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Sit. Um, it'll, it should pop up PA vet or response card right there. And then it'll accumulate everything as per whatever that whatever type of lead they are. Okay, perfect. Now this is your burial and will kit for veterans. So this first section here is all of the updated confirm uh, contact information that the VA wants you to have. So you can see all of the websites and the phone numbers. Anything in red is what's going to apply to your VA burial benefits and life insurance. Okay. Now, this information is pretty important for us to fill out, so we're going to do it together. Um, Aubrey, what is your email address? It's my first and last name, all lowercase, at gmail.com. And what is your phone number? It's area code 210. 279-1212. And what city are you residing in? Um, I am in Sacramento, California. And your zip code? Um, 95630. Okay, perfect. We'll save that. Now, this section over here, this is your veteran information. So you're actually going to want to, after I send this to you and you print it out, please make sure you put in your service number here and your um, your place of discharge as well, okay? Okay. Okay, this section right here. Oh. Um, the reason that this is so important is because that the veterans benefits have not, I'm sorry, I'm messing up. That's okay. They Just found that veteran benefits have not been claimed due to usually one of three reasons. And one is either your family doesn't know what you have, or they don't know where they are, or they don't know which company your benefits are through. And so this uh, guide right here is going to help eliminate all of that problems for you. Okay. okay, so our veterans to be notified section here. So the VA, the veteran service groups have found that it can be really difficult for civilians to work with the VA. Um, and so we're going to put in a couple veterans here that you know that are actually going to assist your family uh, when something does happen to you, so they can work with the VA um, with the family. So who's the first first veteran that comes to mind for you? Oh, gosh. Hmm. I don't even know. Let me think. I think I have one, but that's all I have. Okay. We can go one? ahead. We could go ahead, I guess, and list um, my friend, Billy Joe. Billy Joe. It's, one. It's um, B-I-L-L-I-E. Yep, and last name's Joe. He's in the Marine Corps with me. The Marines, okay. And you said he's a friend? Yeah, just a friend. Okay. Uh, is Billy married? Yep, Mary. M-A-R-Y? Yep. Same last name? Yep, and it's going to have an E at the end. Oh, perfect. Thank you for catching that. Okay, and what is Billy's phone number? Um, 762-453-5571. Okay, and what city is Billy in? I think he's in uh, Houston now, Texas. Were you guys both stationed together? Yeah. Nice. So this is important just because it can help those family members that are dealing with everything after you pass. Um, I know the VA can be difficult to understand as a civilian. So are you sure you don't have another one that comes to mind that's a friend or uh, maybe a neighbor or somebody that you served with that would be able to assist with those conversations? Mm. Not anyone that I want to put right now. Okay, 
not a problem. This is something that I'm going to send to you. So if you think of somebody later on, you can absolutely plug that name in. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to put in the persons to be notified. We're going to do this together. Um, just like we did with the other information. We, they recommend four spots for the family and then some emergency contacts as well. So if something were to happen to you, like a car accident or something, who would be the first person that would need to be notified? Oh, okay. My mom first. Her name is Therese. So T-H-E-R-E-S-E. And then last name is actually the same. So it's K-O-L-L. -L. And you said that's your mom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is your mom married? She is. Um, my dad's name is Vince, V-I-N-C-E. Same, Same last name? name. Mm -hmm. And what is your mom's phone number? It's 916-224-5731. And what city is your mom in? Uh, Sacramento, California. Okay, and so who would be the next person who would need to be notified? Probably my sister. I'll put my sister down. Okay, what's your sister's name? Uh, first name is Nicole. Last name is Day, D-A-Y. And is your sister married? It, it, she, uh, she is, yes. And his name is Daniel. And it's D A N I E L. Perfect. Um, Same last, last name is actually different. It's Langi, spelled L A N G I. And what is your sister's phone number? Um, it's 775 293 7053. And what city is your sister? In? Uh, she's in Reno, Nevada. Okay. And the next family member to be notified? Hmm. Who would I want to put? Um, I guess we could put my brother. Okay. What's your brother's name? His name is Nicholas. N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S. Perfect. And, and what's last his last name? Robinson, it's just like it's our sound. So R O B I N S O N. Perfect. Is Nicholas married? No, he's single. Okay. And his phone number? Um, five three zero two five zero nineteen fifty three. And what city is he in? He is in Grass Valley, California. Okay, and another family member, the, ne the next one to be notified? Uh, I don't think I have anyone else in the family, just those guys. I know that if Nick or uh, my mom gets a hold of the situation, then she'll let everyone know. Okay, so outside of family, the next is the emergency contacts, which would be like a close friend, a neighbor, or a coworker. Who would be good to contact outside of your family? Hmm. I guess I can put one of my best friends. Yeah. Uh, her name's Jessica, just like it's spelled usually. Uh, last name is Curto, C-U-R-T-O. And would you say Jessica's your best friend? Oh, yeah. yeah. She's okay. like a sister. I love that. And is Jessica married? No, she's single. Okay. And what's Jessica's phone number? 916-378-7883. Uh, and what city is Jessica in? Uh, she's in San Francisco, California. It's a big city. Yeah. Okay, so who would be next for a friend, a neighbor, or a coworker? Mm, gosh, let me think. 
Who do I trust? Um, outside of the family. I guess we could put another best friend. Her name's Jordan. It's just like it's usually spelled. And then last name is uh, Garcia. And then, yep, best friend. And she does, she, she is, yeah. His name's Derek. Is it one R or two R's? Just one. Uh-huh. Okay. E- e- K. Yep. And same last name. Um, phone um, number is 916-565-0978. Perfect. And what city is Jordan in? She's in Sacramento, California. Okay. Another friend or coworker or neighbor. Neighbors can definitely be helpful if you know some of your neighbors around you. Um, I don't really talk to anyone around here, so I think I'm okay with those people. Uh, do you have any coworkers that you wanted to list? No, I don't trust those guys. Okay. So right here, you can see this is insurance policies go here. Anything like a group life or a medical insurance will go here. Um, do you have a current will in place? I don't. Okay, nope. not a problem. We'll talk about that in just a little bit here. And then... Go ahead and save that page real quick, though. Go back. Oh. It's okay, oh, yes. go back. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Bum, 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 bum. So I love how when we do these things, the upline is actually coaching you. <laughs> <laughs> through the process it's no it's less as a video so maybe what i should do is say you're not allowed to have the upline help you <laughs> that's okay uh let's see uh hershey there we go see you changed your name guevara now i'm on you all right hershey let's give some feedback to uh miss velasquez I mean, other than um, Tiffany asking her upline a question or pausing to find her place in the script, I was guilty of that myself. I thought she did pretty good. Okay. Thought she did pretty good. That's fair. What would you give her then, a a scale of one to 10? Uh, An eight. Wow. (laughs) Holy mackerel. Tiffany, everyone's, you know, feeling really good about what you got going on. I'm going to feel really bad if I have to give you any bad news. <clears throat> All right, next, uh, let's go to Sierra Polly. Sierra, have I asked you for feedback yet? Nope, not yet. <clears throat> I think that she did a very good job um, trying to get more references and referrals. Mm-hmm. She kind of pushed for that. Um, there was pauses and everything, but... That is what I would be guilty of too. I did email you. This is besides the fact. Um, I was only able to watch Friday's class this morning, mm-hmm. um, but I, I never got an email back from you to see if I there was something I could do. So I didn't get to do the homework, but I'll work well, on that today and get that sent. Yeah, over. if you do it tonight, that would be great. Absolutely. So here's what I say when someone tells me they want to add any coworkers, right? What job did she work at, Tiffany? Let's go back to Tiffany. What what was her job? She was a health coach. She was a health coach, right? And she has coworkers. And what did she say? That she doesn't trust them. Right. And she's self-employed, right? Yeah. So what would be a one more question that you would ask typically? So as a health coach, she's got to go into some sort of facility, right? Right. Like a gym or something like that. She knows the people at the gym, right? That's true. Yeah. Don't trust them. So what could we do? Any idea? Anybody? <laughs> Mia says recruit them. <laughs> yeah, you definitely could do that. Yeah, Jay, what do you got? Clients that she trains. Okay, clients that she trains, that could be there. Um, That's a a thing, absolutely. Well, if she's not showing up to appointments, Tiffany, how would the gym know about it and be able to tell the clients who are showing up and going, hey, where is uh, Aubrey at? Right? Yeah. That's what you could say to get her coworkers at the gym. 
but that would just it would have been really quick if it had been me say hey Aubrey, you're a coach right you go into do you go to a gym do you own your own facility oh no i go into 24 hour nautilus or god shows you how old i am right 24 hour fitness <laughs> planet fitness or whatever like hey i got that you know what we could do is if anything were happening god forbid then you know they would be notified that you wouldn't come in and they'd let all your clients know that would probably be a good thing right Oh, yeah, maybe. And that might get you over the top. So what I'm saying is don't give up anybody on the idea of coworkers. Don't give up. Just ask the one more question, right? Overcome the initial objection. All right, so let's talk a little bit about cadence, uh, all the rest of it. <clears throat> Your tonality is is good because we haven't really gotten to a point yet where you need to lower it or bring it up. I would like to see a little more energy. Your cadence is fine. For all of you, though, I'd like you to write this down. You want to finish and get to the needs analysis screen within 30 minutes. So that's sort of like a touchstone for all of you. Trust me, none of you are getting there in 30 minutes yet. <clears throat> and we'll talk about why. But that should be your goal. And the reason for that is, I'm going to just put it out there, it's exhaustion. It's not your exhaustion unless you're doing multiple presentations. It's the exhaustion of your client. If I'm sitting in that room with you and it takes you 30 minutes to get through to the family information guide, that's a long time. How much time do you think you actually have of my attention if I'm sitting down, Rhonda Morris, in a presentation with you? 40 minutes tops, maybe. Uh, maybe a little more, but yeah, I think 40 minutes is reasonable to get through <clears throat> the majority of things to get to the point where you're actually present a plan. Uh -huh. Johnny Spinner, if you're over an hour by the time we get to the needs analysis, what will I start doing? Uh, I mean, probably getting pretty impatient. Okay, what would you do? If I'm talking to you for over an hour, what happens? It, it, it happens in this class, right? As we get close to the hour you guys think you're leaving, what do you start thinking, Johnny? I would probably just leave. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. But you start find, you're start looking for ways to be finished. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just send everything to me. I'll oh, just fill that out. You know what I mean? So if you know that you only have so much of a bandwidth, and you'll know what that bandwidth is over time. You'll figure it out. Typically, our experience is about 30 minutes to get through everything, to get to the needs analysis at the point that you can say, hey, we just got to wait for a second for the system to uh, provide the recommendations based on your answers. People will then wait. Yeah, because now it's not you they're waiting on. Oh, OK, I got to wait for the system. It should only take a minute or two. They're OK because you're checking in on time. Up until that point, we never check in on time. So if it take you an hour, by the time you get there, they're exhausted. I've seen it time and time again where you can hear it. And a lot of times the agent can't. Why? Because they're busy trying to do HP Pro. They're busy trying to get the information. They're trying to create a plan. They can't see what's happening right in front of them. Okay. Yeah, Bobby, what can I do for you? Uh, yeah, when I saw that, that, you, that, and I went back and looked at my video, and I, and I realized I had 14 um, referrals and my presentation was done with my mom and dad. And it was actually real. Like all of the referrals were real numbers, real emails. They had to go and find them. They had to go and look them up. So the referrals took almost 25 minutes by itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, and, and I get what you're saying that, you know, after mm -hmm. a while they get, you know, disengaged, but I mean, I guess that's case by case basis, and it depends on how much you actually connect with them. You know what I mean? Because well, because because so even in even in Andrew, in, even in Andrew Haskins, his took a while as well. It, he didn't get to to these analysis in thirty in thirty minutes. So, I mean, he, but he built a rapport with them, and they were still engaged throughout the whole process. Yeah, I would agree with you. Here's the key. If you're getting a lot of referrals, then by definition, the clients are engaged. If all you're doing is talking and showing them stuff, their level of engagement is lower. And so their patience run out. And so what I'm saying about the 30 minutes, it's a touchstone. Not everybody's going to be 30 minutes. Yeah. And if you're getting referrals, that's great. But if all you're doing is getting one or two referrals for each one of those sections, it shouldn't take you more than 30 minutes to walk through everything. 
Remember, you're professional, you're providing a service, you're not trying to sell them anything, you're just giving them the information until the point <clears throat> that you finish the needs analysis. The, the more efficient you become at doing that, the more money you will make. So let's think about that for a second. If it takes me an hour to get to the needs analysis screen, that means by definition, it's going to take me no less than one and a half, four, one hour, 45 minutes to finish a presentation, correct? Mm -hmm. So by definition, how many presentations can I get done in one day? Anybody? Maybe four. Hour and a half at four puts us at what? Six hours for the day. That's mm -hmm. a lot of talking, right? Six mm -hmm. hours, the average ALP is, let's say, 1200 bucks. So six times 1200 is equal to 7200 7200 times 0.5 times 0.75 would equal $2,700. That's a really good day. But could mm -hmm. you do that consistently day over day over day? Probably not. <clears throat> and simply because you will get exhausted talking to that same person for that length of time. What you want to do is become more efficient. You still want to take care of the client. You just want to move through things. So Enter Haskins, Bobby, to your point, <clears throat> was actually fairly slow. Why do you think he was <laughs> slow on that engagement? Because he's trying to show you how to move through everything fairly reasonably, right? Because that wasn't just one sale that showed up. Obviously, that was a prepped client, all the rest of it. So that's the goal there. We're trying to show you exactly how it works, but I guarantee you that top people do not take that long to get through everything. If you run into, hey, I've got more <clears throat> referrals to give you, you want to take the time then and take it all in. But more often than not, you're not going to get 25, 12, 15 referrals. My guess is if you can get six to eight on a per basis, you're winning. And if you get six to eight, you should be able to get through that 30, 35 minutes to get to the needs analysis. Again, that's a touchstone. I just want you to keep that in mind. As you start to watch your <clears throat> uplines, your peers this week, <clears throat> I want you to gauge how long does it take them from the moment someone starts on Zoom to the moment they say, uh, here's the needs analysis screen. Once you get to that screen or they get to that screen, time, how long does it take? All right, so for anybody who gets an opportunity to watch it tonight, I want you to time it and then we're going to add up all the time, divide by the number of presentations, and we'll see on average how long it takes these tenured agents to get through to the needs analysis screen. Yes, Jay, what can I do for you? Um, is there any case where we should kind of prep the clients for like, hey, you know, this, this is probably going to take about an hour. Um, if so, at what point should we do that? Okay, so if I'm your client and you called me up and you said, hey, I'm going to issue your benefits. Okay. And you tell me it's going to take an hour. What I'm going to tell you is, hey, just email them to me. Just mail them to me. I don't, I don't need to take an hour of my time for you to give me something that I'm entitled to receive at no cost. Okay. So you're battling this perception problem, right? People are thinking something's free, has no cost. They're going not really worthy of my time. So what I typically do, if you look at my calendar, I say it takes, you know, it takes about 30 minutes. Because in my mind, it takes 30 minutes unless they have a question. People will give up 30 minutes of their time. Now, when I get to the needs analysis screen, I'm going through a bunch more information. They could tell me at any point in time, hey, I'm no longer interested or I don't need to keep going. Okay, perfectly fine. But 30 minutes, I know I can get from where I want to be to where I'm now presenting a plan to a client. If they're inclined to buy, they're going to stick around. And if they do buy, then it takes a little bit more time to process Yeah, But I would never go, I'd never tell a client it's going to take more than 30 because when I do it, I am going to take 30 minutes and give them everything that they should have received. And if they have any additional questions or discussions about the plans, then it goes beyond 30 minutes. That's my mindset. You can take that for what you will. But again, imagine if I'm telling you, Jay, hey, I'm going to give you the issue of these benefits for free. It's going to take about an hour or at least an hour. Immediately, what are you going to think? An hour is a long time. An hour is a long time. <laughs> yeah. Right? But 30 minutes, you're like, ah, I could probably do 30 minutes because typically people try to take in their mind. It's not, it's an interesting psychological thing. If I tell somebody something's going to take 30 minutes, they usually think it's going to take less. If I tell somebody it's going to take an hour, they usually think it's going to take more. 
it's yeah. a it's because of what we've experienced as human beings right 30 minutes oh i can move it quickly along an hour oh that's going to be at least an hour and a half two hours <laughs> that's just the nature of how we think based on our experience does that make sense yeah thank you yep so when i'm on a phone call if i get asked that question how long is it going to take hey it's about 30 minutes unless you have any questions <clears throat> and then you can put the fact it takes longer uh back on them okay so cadence right we we saw some of the cadence as we go through that I thought the cadence was good. Where's she at, Tiffany? I thought the cadence was good, Tiffany. Uh, tonality was good, except we're not going to get to the point of view talking about presenting, which is fine. Rapport, <clears throat> I think you could do a little better on rapport. Not, It wasn't a bad thing, but you know Aubrey and you're working with her, <laughs> right? So the rapport was built by the fact you're like, hey, can I ask you a question? Or, <laughs> or no, go save this at that floppy disk, right? So that's how rapport is built. Camera, I would love everybody to turn their camera off first and then share your screen so that looks natural if you do it the other way around it looks like well why are you turning that off as you become more experienced and released you can leave your camera on the entire time if you wish but i have the statistics that show me new agents that leave their camera on their close rates are lower and bobby why are their close rates lower because the statistics says it <laughs> Bobby, killing me on a Monday morning. I'm no, it's because the question best I can, sir. you're looking away. You're focused on anything else and you're losing contact with that client because new, new agents typically aren't going to do what I usually do, which is look up every so often, reconnect. They're focused on HP Pro. They're focused on the script over here. They got a lot going on. So if I turn that camera off, now the client can't see that. They just assume it's the normal course of business. Close rates go up. Uh, HP Pro, she did use HP Pro, role playing, she did that, check-in and tie-downs. How often did you say, does this make sense, or do you agree, or how often did you tie down, Tiffany? Um, in that beginning section, I didn't do it, and then I started to remember. So after the sections, I would say, like, does that make sense? But I definitely could have checked in more just to create conversation and make sure that the person was engaged. Yep, you want to check in a little bit. However you do that is up to you, everybody, but you do want to check in, right? Now, I'm looking at Aubrey, and she looks like she's in a, in a corner. Right? She's got the door on one side, a door on another. I would like, oh, my gosh, are you being held prisoner? What's going on? Everything okay? That's how I would have done it to start to build rapport, but you can find other ways to do it, and then I would have played off that throughout the presentation to check in. Uh, the script, I would ask Ray Kalina how closely – did Tiffany follow the script? Say like 80%, 90%. Hello? Uh, everything okay, Alexis? <laughs> <laughs> I would say like 80, 90%. 80, 90%. All right. No, no worries, Alexis. I want to make sure you're okay. Uh, yeah, 80, 90% is right. good. Remember what I said about the script. I want you to follow it, but make it your own. If some words or some phrasing doesn't make sense, make it your own. The goal here is to uh, know what the map is and know every place you're supposed to stop. Okay. Referrals and sponsorship, we did that. And then I did, in fact, receive all four documents uh, from her. So great job on that, Tiffany. Efficacy, effectiveness, and efficiency. So efficacy was, hey, did I do what was asked? How many of us did not turn in a video to me? Because I've got the list. I know who didn't turn in a video. Does anybody want to admit they didn't turn a video in? All right. There's a couple of people. Right? It happens. So from an efficacy standpoint, we just couldn't do what we said we were going to do because we all agreed that it was going to be due. For those of you that didn't turn it in, I need it today. Is that fair? Is that fair? Whoever said that? So Johnny says yes. Yes. Who else? I'm, still, says yes. I'm still in the process of getting my password. That's right. Okay, no worries. And then what at least one more, right? Rhonda, can you turn your video into me today? Uh I I I'm gonna be hard pressed if Jason will work on it with me tonight. I I haven't I haven't talked to Jason. I was away all weekend. So uh I'll check in with him tonight, see what we can do. I don't know who Jason is. Jason Toe, he's my upline. Oh, you don't have to do it with your upline. You can do it with a family member, you can do it with anybody. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't oh, have to okay. be your up. I prefer it's not your upline <laughs> for for reasons we discovered with uh, okay. Tiffany, but that's okay. I mean, I can do it. It's going to be terrible, though. That's that's the only thing, because I know I'm not prepared, but I mean, I can work on it. And that's fine. 
I'm yeah, not, we just want to get a baseline. I want to know where yeah. you're at. And, and yeah. So one of the things, just so everybody understands, like this weekend, <clears throat> I'll have uh, a leader call me up or text me and say, hey, this person was trying to do their presentation rubric and they're not doing so well. Can you work with them? And what I then do is you know, I say yes, first of all, but I go back and look at what they submitted to me. Mm -hmm. And then I run the rubric with them again. I want to see if it's improved because that will tell me where they're at. So I need that as a baseline. So even if you don't think you're ready, Rhonda, I want you to please submit it to me because okay. it is a requirement for the class. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So efficacy, did we get it done? Effectiveness. How well did you, not how well, but were you able to get through it? So I can do a video and send it to me. It could be completely wrong. I didn't get through it. Everything crashed, nothing worked, but I had efficacy. I did it. Effectiveness is, <clears throat> did I do it the right way? Did I do what was asked? Okay. So that's what all I was, <laughs> that's poor English. All I was looking for from these videos is what? Efficacy and effectiveness. The other thing is efficiency. I'm not looking for that because I don't expect you to be efficient yet. I don't expect you to know your way around HB Pro completely. I don't expect you to be completely familiar with the script. I want you to be, but I don't expect that. But for each one of you, you want to improve your efficiency because you do not want to take forever in a presentation, whether it's with the rubric and your upline so you can get your leads and get released, whether it's with a client so they can pay or buy into what you're telling them, anything like that, you need to become more efficient. Efficiency comes with time. How many people here think that I was very efficient the very first time I did a script with my own client? By a show of hands, how many people thought I was efficient? <laughs> okay, a couple of you did. So let's be fair, <clears throat> I was efficient. Why? Well, I've been doing this for a long time, but I can't use myself as the touchstone for people new to this business. That's not fair. So let's think of who who think who watched somebody they thought were really good. Who who's watched a presentation? Okay, so Alexis, who did you watch? Uh, Todd Burglar. He's my upline. Okay. And was he really really good? Was he very efficient? Yeah. I feel like um, there is a moment when uh, the HP Pro was really laggy. Um, I think he said it was because there's a lot of people on it at that in that in that moment, um, and so he was just talking to the guy. And I don't even think they noticed how long it actually took for HP Pro to like mm -hmm. get put back up because he was talking about um, what are their hobbies and both him and his wife like to ride motorcycles and go shooting uh, at the range and stuff. And and Todd knew a lot about that, so he was able to keep the conversation and I had my camera off. So I was just watching their facial reactions mm -hmm. and it was like, mm, they don't, they didn't mind that it was like a, it, even though two minutes is not a long time, it's a long time for the computer to sit there and delay. Right. So it's a long time so, if you don't say anything to each other. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, he was good at keeping that. And I, and I told him that was something that I think I would need to work on because I, kind of get into an awkward phase where I just sit mm -hmm. there like what sh should I talk about and he said it will just come natural when you're talking to somebody that you want to make conversation with yeah so that's rapport right it's not necessarily efficiency but it, it's it is rapport oh sorry no that's but okay <laughs> rapport <laughs> pardon me rapport is very very important if you build rapport in the beginning you can come back to it and come back to it and people will forgive you if I make a mistake here with whatever it is I'm doing. Hopefully I've built enough rapport with this class that you believe I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. So if I make a mistake, more often, well, let's, I don't know about this class, but other classes have forgiven me, right? They're like, oh, okay, yeah, everyone makes mistakes. However, if I built no rapport with any of you and then I made a really significant error, <clears throat> what is the likelihood you're gonna forgive me? It's pretty low. You're gonna think my credibility is shot. So that's why rapport is really important so that you can keep that credibility as high as you can. When we're talking about efficiency though, some of these people that you're watching and listening to or giving presentations, they weren't any better than any of you. Michael Fields, what's the only difference between somebody that you watch is really good and something that you've done yourself? 
The difference probably just the smoothness of transitioning in and out of um, parts, different parts of HP Pro, like the or the person I'm training with in my upline, Steve Sparks. Uh, he is extremely efficient um, during uh, presentations. Okay, so Michael, but hold on. So I forgot. I forgot. How I was asking you the question. I remember oh. it, it goes long. What is the one difference between you and them, based on? Do you know what it is? Well, I'm going to tell you. If you don't yeah, um, I'm much slower in, in transitions. Like everything is clunkier, basically. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about your uh, actual presentation. The difference between you and them, they were clunky in the beginning too, is time, mm -hmm. is repetition. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. all it is. They've been doing it for a while. Some of us have really great, some of us, not including myself, have really great outgoing personalities. They connect immediately with people. Some of us have to work at it, but regardless, if you start to, st or if rather, if you stay in this business long enough, you will have done enough presentations. You'll figure out what works for you. Okay. The only difference between you and some of these top people you're watching is time. They've spent the time they've put in the reps. <clears throat> Anybody here play sports or played sports when they were younger? Some of us were athletically gifted, had great hand-eye coordination. Yes. Some of us were not. Right. I think I was 5'2", with size 13 feet. And my parents were like, oh, yeah, well, I'm totally uncoordinated. Then I grew into my feet, and I became very athletic. But it was only because I practiced time and time again. I played a lot of basketball, a lot of football, a lot of baseball, a lot of softball, a lot of ping pong, pool, table tennis, whatever. I did a lot of it for hand-eye coordination. All it is is time. Put in your time. Now, Bobby... So has put in some time and he can speak pretty articulately. Would we agree? When we listen to him give his pitch, <clears throat> he's pretty good. If you listen to me give my pitch, you might think, eh, I'm decent. Maybe not as good as Bobby, but I'm, I'm okay because I've put in the time. Bobby has put in the time. If I take somebody who's had no experience talking in front of people and put them in this class and say, hey, I want you to follow this script while navigating HP Pro and building a plan, allocating, all this other stuff, you think they might have a little bit of a more of a challenge? Maybe, right? So the key is to make sure you can get forgiveness by building rapport. All of us should be able to do that right off the bat. Uh, Michael, what was your question before I asked you mine? Oh, I just wanted to comment on the efficiency um, question that you had given, that's all. Okay, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, um, so, like I said, uh, the person training me, Steve, he is very efficient um, in using HP Pro specifically. Whenever he will finish a part, he will um, stop sharing his screen and talk directly at them, um, make sure they understand everything that he went over. Um, also, while working on building the rapport, checking in on them to see mm -hmm. if they you know, are engaged, are interested. And okay. then while he's doing that, he'll be moving to the next section off screen. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, that is one method of doing it. Like I said, you can do that if you wish, once you're released, if that's what you wanna do. It's all about what's gonna work best for you. The whole goal is <clears throat> make money. You're here for a reason, right? I wanna give you the mechanics <clears throat> and the skeleton, and then you take it from there. So let's talk about the call outs that I noticed from this class. I thought you all did fairly well. <clears throat> How many of you did not look at your video before you sent it to me? How many of you just finished it, good to go and sent it off? A few of you, right? <clears throat> I think there was one video that I looked at that I was a little surprised that you sent it in the way it is. I'm not gonna call it out, but I it, did, it wasn't a body part. It wasn't like that. It was just the quality, okay? So I always want you to review things before you send it off, whether it's to the client. As an example, there's all these <clears throat> PDF files you need to send to a client. Take a moment and look at them to make sure that they're correct, that you're sending the correct files. Um, if your client has a spouse, uh, yeah, Bobby, what can I do for you? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I would have I would have waited. I just wanted no, uh, two, two things. I got a, an appointment at the VA at one. So mm -hmm. in 28 minutes, it's about 20 minutes away. Yeah. Um, 
but I wanted to know if you could just tell me how how mine was. I, I didn't watch it because I don't like watching myself. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't even give you the feedback later for you. Okay, I should be yeah, back. I just got to go uh, sign some paperwork. And yeah, so, no worries. We'll see when you get back if, if you're if we're still here. Now, when you're filling out the family information guide or the financial information guide, or the case may be, and the client has a spouse. What I want you to ask if something happens to both of you, God forbid, however you want to put it. Sometimes what people will do is they'll say, well, who do you want to be your main contact? Oh, I want Mary, my spouse. Okay. And then they put Mary in there. So that's fine. You could do that, but that's taking one of the referrals away from you. Right. And we need them to think about what happens if they both pass away, because we're starting to embed in their mind the idea that they're both gone. What's going to happen afterward? So that's setting us up for the rest of the presentation, okay? On page one of the group letter, whatever group letter you show, only show page one. If you only have one page, then no problem. But if you're, let's say you use an SGMAD or any of the others in the US, there might be multiple pages, only show the first page because the other pages are for later on in the script. Now let's talk about transition phrases. So, how many times today, Tiffany Velasquez, today only, how many times have I used phrases such as like, um, all right, or awesome? Today, none that I've noticed. Has anybody else noticed that I've used those phrases at all today? How many videos do you think, Sky Warren, that I watched that use those phrases? I would say a lot because I know mine had them. <laughs> Almost 100%. So here's the thing about transition phrases. <clears throat> what you're really doing is you're pausing to give yourself time to collect your thought so that way you can discuss that thought or utter that thought in the next sentence. It is a learned behavior, which is totally understandable. When a, your camera is on, you're all looking at me right now, or I hope some of you are, <laughs> but you're communicating with me, or rather I'm communicating with you visually. I'm using my hands, I'm looking up, I'm nodding my head, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm doing all kinds of things. You're taking that in. The moment I turn my camera off, what ends up happening is you now spend more time, either you tune me out completely and you don't listen, or you actually listen more because now you're not getting any visual data to process. Does that make sense, Hershey? Yes, sir. So <clears throat> if I ask you to turn your video off because I think it improves close rate and you do, your vernacular or the way that you speak doesn't change because most of you are just going to speak the way that you normally would speak. So when you use phra uh, phrases such as um, as an example, when the camera's on and we're watching you, we naturally filter that out. It is a very remarkable human thing. There are a lot of things that we do <clears throat> that are said out loud that our ears, our mind filters out as background noise. It doesn't even occur to us. The moment that camera turns off though, I no longer have a visual cue. Now I'm listening more. And now I can really hear all these transition phrases. The most egregious is um. There are other ones that I use, such as so. I will use the word so a lot to transition. But what I'm doing there is I'm transitioning from one concept to another, not necessarily one thought. So how many of us believe they use the word um? And I'm going to loosely call it a word, but let's say it's a word. How many of us use the word um? Now, okay, that's fine. So most of us use it. <clears throat> and some of us use it and don't even realize we use it. Some of us use it so often that it's a natural part of our vernacular. How many of us have kids? Anybody here have kids? All right, for those of you with kids, do they, do they ever use the word like? They hear it at school, or they hear it in public, and they just naturally blends into their vernacular. And it gets to the point where you don't really hear it anymore. You know they're doing it, 
but you're listening, you're allowing them to be expressive because they want to talk about whatever happened at school. Or they're talking about something or their friends. And Jimmy was like this and Sue was like that. He was hearing all that. What ends up happening though, it becomes a learned behavior and it gets ingrained more and more and more. Again, with the camera on a foreign person, it is nowhere near as bad as if we no longer have the visual cues. So how many times, Tiffany, do you think you use the word um in the first five minutes of that video? I caught it at least twice. And do you think the rate of using it picked up as you went forward? Possibly. Yes, it picked up. You were starting to have them, you know, we're going to fill this out. We're going to fill this out, um, this one, and um, I'm going to fix this. You, you started to pick it up because that's your natural way of speaking. The reason I bring this up for all of you, I don't expect you to change the way that you speak immediately. I will tell you this. The more you can affect that change and move away from those transition phrases, the better you will sound to your clients, whether you're on video or not. So all of us, what I want you all to do <clears throat> is starting now, track how many times I use a transition phrase, whether I use like, um, all right, awesome, so track it. So by the end of today, we'll see how many times I use a transition phrase because now you're aware of it. I bought a car and what, or my daughter bought a car this weekend, rather. It was a Ford Focus. She wanted a little car. I have no idea why, but hey, now I see a bunch of Ford Focuses on the road. Never noticed them before. I see the commercial. I don't pay any attention to that. I remember back in the day, I wanted to get a, uh, uh, well, not a Camaro. It was a Chrysler 300. I thought those were nice cars. And I would see one, I was like, ooh, that looks really nice. I'm going to get one. Then I bought one. The very day I bought one, everywhere I looked, everyone had a 300. I thought I was unique, but now everybody has them. That's what happens when we focus our attention on something. It becomes very apparent to us that it's been around us all the time. We just didn't really notice it. So <clears throat> can I get a commitment from, see, I did that right there. So but I, I wasn't moving my thoughts. I was moving the subject. Can I get a commitment from everybody that will track how many times I use a transition phrase from here until the end? And we're going to track it each day. So at the end of the day, Pretty, are you there? Pretty, is Pretty here? Pretty? Yeah, Pretty, I'm here. Yeah. Where are you? Okay, Pretty, you're, you're managing my parking lot, correct? Yes, I am. So at the end of every day, can you make sure that we get the count? Yes, for sure. see how often I use it. All right, so we'll talk about that at the end of the day, but all of you just be aware of it. Once you're aware of something, it will get better. It will naturally get better because you start catching yourself. And that's the whole key. Once you start catching yourself, you'll try to correct for it. It'll be a little awkward in the beginning. I guarantee you, though, the payoff is huge. How many of us listen to President Biden ever? How many of us have ever heard him speak? Anybody? I'm not asking about the politics. I'm just asking about the way he speaks. Do we notice something about the way he speaks? Anybody? John, are you talking to me, but you're muted? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I said something um, about the way he speaks. Yes. Yeah, he doesn't speak very well. Right. And we notice that. It's really prevalent because he's the only one at the very, very top, right? So what, forget about what he's saying, just how he says it, <clears throat> it become, it sticks in us. So that's what I want all of you to do when you're watching me is let it stick in your head. Hey, he did it now. He did it here. I'm counting this. I'm counting that. As you start to do this for yourself, you will naturally self-correct. It's a natural thing. You will self-correct. And the more you self-correct, the better of a speaker you will become, the more effective you will be at communication because now your language is not going to be distraction, sorry, distracting unintentionally. Does that make sense to everybody? How many people think I use language to distract you intentionally? Like I'm doing it on purpose. So Mia thinks so, does anybody else think so? Okay, so a few of you have caught on. How many of you think I use language unintentionally to distract you by using um and things like that? Okay, nobody. So we'll pay attention. We'll see how well I do the rest of the day. <clears throat> Using the floppy disk icon, 
This is really key because that floppy disk is everywhere and everything that we do. If you don't use it, you potentially, if HP Pro dies, something happens, you won't have the information to download into the uh, PDF file that you're going to send the client or keep for yourself. If you don't have that PDF file, let's say you got 27 referrals and all of a sudden you didn't save that floppy disk and you're in the needs analysis, you're starting to pitch somebody. Mia Irwin, what are the odds that you are going to go back and try to get the client to give you all 27 of those people again? Probably, probably not. Probably zero. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it happen <laughs> because people want to get to the buy, right? right? They want to get to the buy. When I say people, you as agents, you want to get to the close. Simple rule, hit the floppy disk and realize that those people that you're downloading into your lead pack are more valuable than the sale. Sierra Pauly, why are the referrals more valuable from my perspective? Why are the referrals more valuable than the actual sale to the client? Because it's more potential sales. Because it's more potential sales. Sure. <clears throat> That's one way of looking at it. Absolutely. 100% of the time, you can get referrals. And we know referrals close at 50%, if not higher. For new agents, 35% of the time, 33% of the time, they actually close business with corporate leads. So if you start to look at it and say to yourself, if I do my job correctly every single time and I get referrals, and I save them, and we use that floppy disk so they show up in my lead pack, I'm going to do much better in terms of making money for myself. If I didn't worry about referrals, the only thing I worried about was closing the business. I can be a great closer, but I have to work really hard, don't I? Because every single time I'm talking to somebody, I have to build my credibility up. I don't know about you. I'd much rather have somebody say, hey, Gregory Joyner, I want you to attend this class that Samuel Sweet gives for new agents because he does a pretty good job going through everything. And that person recruiting you in and Gregory's like, okay, I'll listen to you because you said so. So by the time you get to me, you're already thinking I might do a halfway decent job. I don't know if that ever happened, Gregory, but I'm just using you as an example. Whereas if you were just signed up and no one told you anything and you just showed up in this class, now I have to build the credibility from scratch. I have to work harder. Does that make sense to everybody? Jennifer, are you buying into what I'm saying? Jennifer, is Jennifer here? No? no yes, Jennifer? I gave you a thumbs up on screen. Oh, I okay, am. I'm sorry. Yeah. I <laughs> sorry about that. All right, the last one <clears throat> in the call outs, rather than ask who else do you want to add? Or hey, you have one more. Don't do that. Just ask who is next. Who is next? And hit the plus button so another one shows up and just say who is next. Because if you ever run into anybody who wants to please you and wants to give you what you're asking for, they'll continue to give you names until they have no more names to give. But if you say, hey, this is your last one, then in fact, that's your last one. They may have three or four others and they could all close for $2,000 a piece. So that's at least $6,000 in ALP you could potentially have achieved if you just said who is next. Rachel Kowal, does that make sense to you? It does. It does. So no one wants to engage with me today. They're all like, yes, no, no, yes. Rachel, you still there? I'm still here. Rachel, did I get your video over the weekend? Yeah, you did. I sent okay. it over to you. Yeah. Great. Uh, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Let's, uh, what are we going to do now? Let's take a little break. Let's come back to the top of the hour, everybody. Okay. Top of the hour. Thank you. All right, everybody. I am back. Let's see. <clears throat> wow. I'm looking a little orange. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we're going to do practice now. <clears throat> I think it's important that we do uh, more practice on the script. So we did part A, which I received from all of you. Now we should do the next part. 
and get a little more, not a little more, but get more repetitions in. If we did part C, that would be walking through the final expense uh, protection. However, we're going to uh, submit that to the clients. However, I think what is important for us is B, practicing actually transitioning from the read-off letter through to the building the plan. Because it's been a few days since we've done that. I think that is vitally important. Would you all agree? We need more practice on building the plan and feeling comfortable with it. Okay, so that's where we're going to do that. Now, again, I ask all of you, you need to practice on your own as well. Spend the time to go through it, get very comfortable navigating your way in HP Pro. We do spend time in class, but I don't think it's nearly enough time to do that. So I'm going to put you into a breakout rooms. It's going to be automatically assigned because it doesn't matter what script you're going to use because once we get into the transition, it's very straightforward. Every script is the same. You show the letter, you say the language, and go through it. Now you have to start in the beginning by using other. So you can't use pre-plan here. You've got to use other and build it up based on whatever your role play partner says that they're going to work with you on and then go all the way through that. So we've got two hours. I would expect that it would take you less than two hours to get this done because you're not going through the entire script. You're practicing building the plan and help each other. And if you have any questions or run into any problems, obviously ask for help and I will come into your room. Do I have any questions on what we're going to be doing now? No? Okay, so let's jump in there. You're assigned automatically. There you go. The rooms are open. Okay, we're back. We're getting everybody to come back in, close in about 30 seconds. <clears throat> what challenges, Mia, did you have building a plan? Um, I did not. I said, um... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any trouble building a plan. It's definitely the, you know, the transition part that we struggled with the most. Um, transitioning like, from where to where? From a, not even transitioning from, well, we went all the way from B to the beginning of these. So we went probably further than we were supposed to. But okay. so where the, were you having trouble? So just the start of B. Just the start of B. Right. The, what, so bringing up the letter and reading the statement and then transitioning into the needs analysis? Yes, yes. What was the problem? Just the time it takes to, you know, read the script, click off the letter, get into mm -hmm. the needs analysis, type and everything, stuff like that. Okay, but you're not telling me, <laughs> me, you're not telling me what the problem was. You're telling me it take it is the problem how much time it took? Yes. <clears throat> how much time did it take you? We did it twice the first time. Uh, it took, I mean, probably 30 seconds, which I feel is a long time for someone to be sitting there waiting. So the second time that we did I'm it. I'm sorry. I'm uh, okay. Yeah, I'm confused. <clears throat> you got to help me here. Right, so you have this the picture up right of the letter, and you're saying <clears throat> it takes you 30 seconds to transition from that letter into the needs analysis screen. Well, the transition between the letter and moving the script up and down or down, you know, to read. The next section. Okay. If I can, if I can pop in here, I was in there with Mia, and and I just to clarify, I think what she's saying is between, like after we have the needs analysis filled out and and then we're uh, computing the plan. Okay, so that's different. Understood. Is that what you're trying to say, Mia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. so you're saying. Hey, go and fill this out, whatever you say, verify the information, whatever. At the moment you're done, you're pausing your screen. The time it takes for you to build a plan. Yes. And then 
Reshare. Okay, so that's different than transitioning. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, a lot of people have that issue. After you've done it a number of times, it won't be an issue for you. It'll be fairly easy because you're building the same plan virtually every single time. What I suggest that you do is if you think that it's going to take a while, what you say is, hey, Jennifer, uh, I'm going to wait. You know, we're going to wait for the system to give us the recommendations based on your information. This might be a good time for you to take a break, walk the dog, get a drink of water, okay. facilities, something like that. So that way they do know that there's a definitive break as opposed to silence while you're busy good. trying to do something. Okay, okay, that works. Thank you. Yep. For me, I can read the script as I build the plan, but I know what I'm doing every single time. I've done it enough times. You'll get to that point. Yeah, Justin. So that that was my question is, is it looks like we can just continue to go through the script while we're building that plan. But the problem that me and I had is just that we're not familiar enough with the script to mm -hmm. read it and build the plan at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So give yourself yeah. a break. Just say, hey, Sam, uh, just let you know, it's going to take a second for the system. Remember, put everything on the system, not on you, because you want to look like the hero at the end or the heroine at the end and say, you know what, let me see what I can do for you. Everything okay. up until then is based on recommendations from the system. So let the system take the heat of taking a little bit of time to generate recommendations. Perfect. Cool. Okay. I didn't know that was an option, so thank you. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. It's an option. And if you watch other presentations by other people, they'll probably use something similar to that unless they've been around for a while and they can just move yeah. through it. Okay. All right. So let me ask Rachel Kowal, how many times did I use a transition phrase? The We did it um, roughly two and a half times each. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. The transition phrase. Um, <laughs> so I just used it twice. <laughs> Uh, I did not keep a check. I, I came in late today. So uh, since our period of time, I'm guessing five times. If I okay, can late. no worries. Let's ask Pretty. Pretty, how many times did I use a transition phrase? Um, nine times that I counted. You counted nine times that I, what phrase did I use? You used a uh, so and however. Uh, well, however, is not, no, however is not a transition phrase. What were the other two? So. So. Mm, I'll give you that. I mean, uh, begrudgingly. And what was the other one? Uh, I used um. How many times did I use um? Uh, it was just once. So if I had not told you to look for it, would you have even noticed it? No. Probably not, right? So again, we're not asking everyone to change their vernacular over the course of one class or one course or even one year with American Income. Just be aware of what it is that you're doing and how you relate. The best way is record yourself. Just record yourself a couple of times as you're doing your presentation, whatever, and watch how you interact with people and what you say. Yes, Rhonda, what can I do for you? Tiffany was awesome. I, I actually watched quite uh, particularly for that and I, and she didn't do it. I was I was impressed. It's very good. So Tiffany, were you aware of trying not to do it? No, I was so hyper focused on trying to like not sound robotic when I was reading the script that I think I just just didn't do it. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's all. If you only read the script verbatim, it's not in there. So that helps. But I also understand that people don't want to sound robotics. So you need to put a little bit of your flavor and flair, so to speak, into your presentation. Totally understand. So tomorrow we have a guest speaker who's going to join us and talk about, I don't know what, whenever he joins, he speaks about different things. It's always good. I think it's a nice break from you all listening to me chat about whatever. The homework for tonight is going to be for those people that have not submitted a video to me, you need to submit a video to me tonight. And I think there's at least three of you that agreed to do it. Yeah, Adam, what can I do for you? Uh, I wasn't here for Friday and I didn't get the video from Friday. You sent uh, the email that I got the other days. What is this video we're making for you? Oh, I didn't send Adam. I A M A D A M E A B E L, right? At Gmail. So I've sent it to you before. Did I not send an email out on Friday? 
I may not have. Did anybody get my email? I did not. Okay. So Adam, what that is, it's a, a video of you interacting with somebody, role-playing, part A of your presentation. So for you oh. in Canada, it's either going to be the McGruff or it's going to be the no-cost legal will kit. And you're starting from the beginning all the way through to the end of part A. Okay, no okay. problem. Yep, it's pretty straightforward. I apologize, everybody. I'll put an email out today when the video is available for you to take a look at from today's session. This will be fairly short. We will uh, reconvene tomorrow, usually at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, like I said, we will have a guest speaker for tomorrow. We'll also have a guest panel that will come up on Thursday, and hopefully we'll have one of the senior leaders talk to us on Friday. So I'm trying to break it up. I think what I'll do is start tomorrow, uh, the last two hours, on yeah, to get that ball rolling, because I think this class is actually a little ahead of other classes. So I want to make sure we spend a lot of time on EAP so that we're completely comfortable with it by the time the class is over. Do I have any questions from anybody? Yes, Ray, what can I do for you? You said the homework was to send the video. If you didn't, what about the people that did? No, if you've done that video already, then you don't have to send me that. The only homework for you is just practicing your script because you have your presentation rubric that's due on Thursday, making outbound calls to so work with your upline so you can do that and watching presentations that hopefully are sales. Okay. That's all the homework for uh, tonight. Gotcha. Yes, Jay, what can I do for you? Um, a couple of days, I just said, um, so um, a few days ago, when you pulled up the screen, showing it was outlining all the coverages that we offer the cancer plan all of those yes. how do you get to that so that's in the new agent packet which is attachment one okay. uh, or labeled as zero one dash new agent packet it's all in there awesome yep and every single day starting tomorrow we need to have that open as we go through this because i'm going to refer to the information in there quite a bit and we're going to be talking uh, tomorrow starting about, sorry, tomorrow we're going to start talking about EAP as well as what it means to be a field underwriter and the information that we have to be aware of. Do I have any other questions from the class? All right, everybody. I will see you tomorrow morning, my time at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks a lot. Have a great day or a great evening. Take care.